Back here on our Bella Early Edition, we are going to deep dive the Celtics in just a bit. But to set it up, Brad Stevens takes some time today to help ABCD Hoop Dreams, the charity basketball tournament, played on the TD Garden Parquet. And before the event, the Celtics president of basketball operations, still a little weird to say, took time to speak with our own Michael Holly, tonight's MC, about the Celtics' struggles this season. Why is the team, why are the Celtics... Uh, struggling so far this season if you had to come up with the biggest reason for the struggle what is it yeah it's interesting because now I'm so much more at the 10,000 foot view than maybe before um, you know from from my standpoint we've had moments in every game where I think we've looked like we could take the game right so you could easily be you could easily be one and six but you could also easily be five and two even six and one. And I just think we have to get better at playing on both ends of the floor. We have to get better at figuring each other out and playing together. One of the lessons last night uh, that Marcus Smart tried to uh, drive home, and it was shocking to a lot of people to hear that coming from the players that, you know, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum need to pass the ball more. Um, tough message. On a night, he had zero assists. I understand the message. But is that the right message? You think it's coming from the wrong, at the wrong time? I think the most important thing about last night's message or the, you know, what he said was that he talked to those guys about it. And, you know, I saw that today. And so it's funny when you're in the, when you're in it and when you see guys at the facility and you see him and Jason sitting down eating breakfast together today and talking about like how to, you know, come to find our solution for our team. I mean, those guys want to win. And at the end of the day, you know, I think that that's the most important thing. I do think that you have to be, you have to be measured when you, when, you, when you talk publicly, but certainly the most important thing is if you put your name on it, you've got to, you've got to make sure you have those direct, difficult conversations. I actually thought on several occasions last night, the ball moved better as a group than it has all year. I thought we, we made strides for three quarters, but that last quarter just overshadows it and makes everybody feel like crap, right, leaving the gym. Is this the right group, these guys? Is this the right group together, especially at the Yeah, the we're going to find out. We're going to find out. I mean, I think the – I thought last year we were 8-3 and three to start the year, and it didn't, it didn't feel like 8-3 and three from my perspective. From the seat I was in, I felt like we had a lot of things that we were going to have to really – you know, account for, and we were going to have to be a lot better. And then we got hit with other stuff. And so right now at two and five, I feel a lot better from the structural standpoint. All right. Well, we are going to deep dive the Celtics and we begin with Jackie McMullen, who I could hear over Zoom go. Hmm. I mean, they were eight and three <laughs> last year, Jackie, and they weren't a very good team. Do you buy what Brad Stevens just said there that this two and five team is better and can be better than the team last year? Well, I guess I'd buy that they can be better. I thought the most interesting thing from that interview, Trenny, was Brad Stevens. When, when Michael asked Brad Stevens, is this the right group? He said, we'll find out. That was an interesting answer, I thought. Um, listen, the Celtics have a lot of problems. It's early. Is it too early to say this team can't do it? This is the wrong mix. I think it's too early to say that. But, but what it's not too early to say, because we saw it last season as well, is to say, can Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown find a way to make each other better? Can they just concentrate on being on the floor together and enhancing each other? That's what I want to see. And the other part that just confounds me is the defensive slide that this team has taken. You know, in the in 2019-2020, Trenny, the Boston Celtics were the best team in the NBA in guarding the three-point shot. I think they're 22nd today, and people can say, or 24th, actually. People can say, well, that's a small sample size. Well, last year they were 22nd. So that's about toughness to me, physicality. That's what I don't see from this group so far, and that's not what, and that's exactly what I thought was missing last year, and that's a certain mental tenacity that falls on your leaders, and that includes Marcus Smart. So, Jackie, you said you thought the most interesting, interesting thing to come out of that interview was Brad saying, mm, we'll see about this group. Do you think this is the right group to lead the Boston Celtics I, to another title? So I think that's the part that's too early because we're only seven games in with a new coach. Again, what worries me if I'm the Celtics is Jason Tatum leads the league, Trenny, 
in shots attempted. He's only shooting 27% for the three-point line. He'll get better. Jalen Brown, I believe, leads the league in um, having the fewest assists for a player who's taking 20-plus shots. Those are not the stats you want for your two best players. Everyone's focusing on the offense. I understand that. If I were Amy Aduka, excuse me, Amy Aduka and Brad Stevens, I'd be much more worried about the defensive side of the ball. I really would. I think that's where they lose these games. I think that's where they lost the game last night. They weren't tough enough. They weren't physical enough. They weren't locked in enough. They turned the ball over. All of those things. Transition defense not existed last night. Those are the things that would bother me if I were in charge of the Celtics. Did it bother you that Marcus Smart called out his teammates last night publicly? I don't know. That's sort of how Marcus rolls. And I don't blame him to some degree because I never worry about Marcus Smart's defensive effort, uh, fighting through screens, never taking the easy way out. You know, the other thing that's just a bad look is if you're Jason Tatum and you're taking a shot, playing hero ball with three guys hanging on you and you miss the shot and you go and look at the referees and you're jogging back on defense. That drives me crazy and I know it drives GMs crazy it drives uh, agents crazy it drives fans crazy it's just a bad look that's something that Marcus Smart doesn't generally do so I think he, he's got tenure and he backs up his play in terms of on the defensive end I get the zero assist thing you probably should have checked the box score <laughs> on that but I do think there's some truth to what Marcus Smart is saying and I don't mind it and and I'm sure he did say that you know what else I mind I mind those two stars not coming out to meet the media after the game. Come on, boys. Put on your big boy pants. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, you read my mind. I was going to ask you about that because, to me, these two are always talking about how they want to be the stars. They want to be on the leader, the leaders of this team, and then they don't come and face the music. But they also, at times, Jackie, don't get back on defense because Jason Tatum is too right. concerned with talking to the refs. They're not dishing the ball out. They're not passing it. They're not creating shots for their teammates. How do you get those guys to take that next step? Well, that's that's the big question, isn't it? And that's what Marcus Smart was wondering aloud. And that's what Brad Stevens, I'm guessing, is waiting to see. Look, these are two tremendously talented players. Jason Tatum is an otherworldly talent. He's only 23 years old. He still has some growing up to do. But at some point, you have to be willing to commit to the little things as well as the big things, the big shot to win the game. you got to commit to the whole package. And I don't think Jason Tatum has quite done that yet. All right. Well, the Celtics team is struggling at the end of games. Let's take a look at the Ford big board. This is what the team is averaging in the fourth quarter this season. 23 points, ranks 24th in the NBA. They're dead last in field goal percentage and assists. 29th in plus minus and 26th in points per game allowed. Let's bring in Ryan McDonough now, of course, very familiar with the front office of the Celtics and overall in the NBA. Ryan, what was your biggest? You just listened to Jackie McMullen. What was your biggest takeaway from last night and really the way that they've played through the first seven games of this season? Attorney Jackie, great to be on with you guys. Jackie made a number of great points, as she always does. Uh, watching the film today, a few things stood out, and they, they were pretty much on the defensive end. I thought the lack of physicality, especially getting into the ball handler defensively, uh, that was concerning. Melting on screens uh, and not fighting over was concerning. The first five or six field goals the Chicago Bulls made were three-point shots. Uh, they weren't particularly pressured by the starters of the Boston Celtics. And then really what was probably the most concerning uh, rewatching the film today was the transition defense. You guys touched on it, the lack of effort in transition. Every coach in the NBA today, whether it's Brad Stevens, Emeo Doker, or somewhere else, harps on transition defense, the importance of it. Uh, if you look at points per possession, those are the most efficient shots in basketball. If you can get run out layups or dunks in transition, every team wants to eliminate that. And as you guys mentioned, the Celtics effort starting with their stars was not good enough. And look, whether the ball goes in the basket or not, uh, whether the free throw goes in or not, you, you can't, uh, you know, go for offensive rebounds you don't have a chance to get. You can't hang in the backcourt teams like Chicago are too good and too talented. They'll, they'll get out in transition. And I felt like uh, all night the Celtics were kind of playing from behind in terms of um, even when they go on a run offensively, they give up some easy demoralizing baskets. And, uh, you know, frankly, I think if Marcus Smart didn't play last night, they could have given up 150 points instead of 128. That's how porous <laughs> their defense was. You know, uh, 
a lot of what both of you are saying, unfortunately, is like deja vu from last season, right? Like the things that this team is not doing. And I feel, I think, Jackie, we'll start with you and then Ryan, you can follow up. I think a lot of people thought with Ime Udoka that would change in an instant, that he would come in, he would set a different tone, they would listen to him in a different way than they did Brad Stevens. I know you don't know why it's not happening, but does Ime Udoka, and it's a small sample size, though, have what it takes to get this team to start doing what it needs to do? How does he get them to buy into his system? I think we'll, we'll find that out in the next couple of weeks. If, if I'm Ime and I call a timeout, as I did in that game last night, and I lit into you and I told you what I wanted and you didn't respond, and I had to call another timeout to re reiterate that, I'm sitting guys down. I'm going to say, you know what? I might not win this game, but I'm going to sit the guys down that aren't listening to me, and I'll put guys out there that are willing to play the way I'm asking you to. Yeah, Trent, Trent, one of the concerns I have is this is not the Houston Rockets or Oklahoma City where the team is playing a lot of very young players in their teens or early 20s. Uh, the Celtics are a relatively experienced group, and what coaches will tell you all the time is you can't coach effort. I think there's some room for debate there, but uh, Emi Odoka now at 2-5 at and five with the team 12th in the Eastern Conference. Certainly, they have not gotten off to the start they wanted. Um, he needs to demand some things. He needs to hold players accountable to certain things. Uh, if he came in and wanted to build a relationship uh, with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and others, I certainly understand understand that. Uh, however, that relationship does not mean, um, you know, not holding those guys accountable when things aren't going well. So I'll be very interested to see watching the next few games. If there are quick benchings, if guys do not run back in transition, if they melt on sc screens, if Udoka has a quicker hook going forward, even with some of his young stars. Ryan, if things don't change, is it time for Brad Stevens when he can to make a big move that sends a message? Does he have to send the message from the front office? Well, here's the challenge with that, Trenny, and Jackie knows this. Um, most of the league is not eligible to be traded until uh, after December 15th. So we're recording this show in early November. Any player who signed as a free agent this offseason uh, is not eligible to be traded until no, uh, excuse me, December 15th. So we're still about a month and a half out at this point. Uh, so there's, there's no magic bullet. And I, I think that should be the message for the guys in the locker room is, look, we need to figure out solutions internally. Uh, now, the trade deadline is not till February, so Brad Stevens has some time to evaluate things. But... Um, there's no superstar trade coming, at least not in early November. If you look at the history of the league, that usually does not happen. Uh, so I, I think that has to be the message from Odoka. Like we have enough talent in this locker room. We have enough depth in this locker room to figure it out. And I'm going to hold you guys accountable to do that. And hopefully you get buy-in from the young stars, uh, starting with Tatum and Brown. You know, speaking of those two names, Jackie, you know, you said it's too early to tell whether this group can win. If they continue to struggle and you have to make a move, is it possible and would it be wise? Is it possible that maybe Tatum and Brown can't play together? And could we get to a point where one of them has to go? Well, you know, the NBA and Ryan will back me up in this. It's one of the great gossip leagues of all time. <laughs> GMs, agents, everybody, writers, we all love to gossip. And that is what everybody is gossiping about right now. Can these two guys play together? I think there's still time. They're both very young. I think it, 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 it's got to happen soon, but I think it is possible for them to enhance one another. And, and to really, if they really focused on that, I think they would solve a lot of these issues. I, I don't know. You'd, you'd have to take a really big deep breath to go trade Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, because I'm telling you, those are rare offensive talents. And I've told so many coaches have said to me, Hey, defense is great. And we love defense, but we can find defensive players to find offensive players that are as gifted as these two. That's a tall order. So you'd have to take a deep breath. And before you pull the trigger on either one of these two.